In the final segment for the Dutch Cottage Design Project, we're going to take a look at producing our construction documents through the layout. As we go back into the program, I've opened up a brand new layout, and the reason it opens up to this particular layout is in my preferences. Under New Plans, I've got my layout template. And what you can do is you can open up your profile template and make changes to it and save that and use it as your profile template. That way, every time you open it up, it will have the certain things on there that you like to use. So my template has some text items that I use so I don't have to recreate these. And then on page zero, I have your plan name. And I'll make modifications. On page zero is the master page. Anything on this page will show up on subsequent pages. You can also create multiple master pages if you want to search in the help. So if you want a master page for the way your electrical looks or a master page for the way your section details look, you can create those pages. On page zero, I'm going to make a change to the plan name. Type that in and the rest of it I'm going to leave the same. This is nothing more than an image file for your logo, so you can simply drag those in, position them, and create your own logo on your page. Let's go back to page one. And on page one, I typically also have a text box here for the name of the item that I'm going to send. I may change that and copy it to subsequent pages for elevations or sections. But that way I don't have to retype it and figure out what scale and font sizes that I want. Now if I go back over to the floor plan, we've gone through this design with the previous eight videos and we've created the floor plan, the foundation plan, certain elevations. And as I've been doing that, I've created layer sets for these things. Layer sets are a collection of layers that are on or off. I've got my floor plan set. If I change it to my kitchen and bath set, you can see certain things turn on and off. And that way I can just change those layer sets and then send that view out to the layout sheet that I want. I'll change it back to my floor plan set. And now I'm going to send that to the layout page by choosing out of the menu here send a layout and then we'll set the scale. In this case I'm going to use quarter inch. By the way I never have this make a copy of the actor layer set because as you saw in my drop down over here I like to control my own layer sets and not create copies of those. We'll set the scale at quarter inch and we'll send that to page one. As that appears on page one I'll just click on it I'm going to hold my control key down and slide that over. Notice that in here I've got a label. It's called first floor. So there's a default label. I usually just turn that label off. I'll open that object up, turn off the label. And you'll notice that I have my default text in the plan. All this is is a text object. And I'm going to grab this and pull it over and set that up for my floor plan. All this is is a rich text object. If you double click, you can see that here is the text floor plan underlined left justified and I've typed in the quarter inch equals one foot. That is right justified and it's an eighth of an inch. Off to the right, I'm going to send out my foundation view. It'll toggle back to the floor plan. I've gone down to page zero. I've turned off my dimensions. Those aren't important in this case. I'm going to send that out to the layout sheet again. File, send a layout, define what scale that I want, send it out there, and reposition it. And by the way, if you ever change your mind about what scale you'd like to see, you can simply highlight that object, and you can always rescale it by using the change scale. I'm just going to actually slide this down and I'm going to move that section text here in just a second. And what I want to do up above it is I want to send a 3D view out. Let's go back into our floor plan, take a 3D camera overview, and once I have the camera positioned the way I like and all of the layers on and off that I want, I can actually send this image directly out to the layout. This won't be at scale, but there is a new option in X8 and newer to send it out as a live view and you can always update it, meaning if you change the camera style to technical illustration or glass house, it will update or update on demand, which is a little less taxing on your computer and the response time of your file. 
Once I select that, I'll send it out to the layout sheet and I'll go ahead and crop in on that extra white space. We'll slide those crop handles down and I'm just going to pull that over and position it on the page where I want it. I'm going to take this text and grab that text. I'm just going to cut that and I'm going to paste it on this second page over here so I can use it for the next page. For the foundation plan, let's take our floor plan text. We'll copy that and I'm just going to slide it over here. Open that up and then we'll make the change for foundation plan. And again, you'd probably have your dimensions on here. But in this case, I don't have any dimensions on here. And then we'll just resize that so that it's a little bit larger, the right size that I want. Let's copy that and again, just put that on page two. We'll just paste it over here off to the corner. Now let's go back to our floor plan. And I'm going to open up one of the active cameras that we created for our section detail. Open that camera up here. And then I'm going to send that out to the layout sheet number two. Again, file, send a layout. Sheet number two, it will default to that sheet if that was the sheet you were on. We'll try quarter inch and see how that looks. And I'm going to go ahead and crop in just on the area that I want. Let's go ahead and just uh, pull that in so that it's tight on the structure. And then I'm going to try and rescale this. Let's see what it might look like at twice this size. So let's rescale it at half inch and take a look and see what it looks like. So there's our half inch scale for this. And let's go ahead and we'll pull this text object over to the side. And for this section, let's pull this over and we'll give it a section name. And let's just go ahead and call it uh, stair section. And then in the call out, I'm going to go ahead and open that up. I think I called that S1 in the detail. And now all I have to do is now change the scale indicator to a half inch. And if you want to resize that, we can pull that down a little bit. And we'll just pull this text over. And that's how we create that. And let's go ahead and grab these couple of objects. And I'm going to just put these on the other page over here. Copy those and we'll put those on page three. Back on page two, you saw earlier, actually on page one here, you saw how we sent our image for this foundation plan out directly from the plan. Let's take another look at how to do that. I'm going to grab that text and put it on this page here. We'll open it up and we'll just give it a name. Now, I've already pre-rendered an image out. I've ray traced it, and I'm just going to grab that image and pull it off of my file structure and paste it in here. It's going to be quite large, and I'm just going to simply resize that down to something that will fit on the page and pull it in here. Let's use the control key. And that's how I can get an image into the design that is not directly sent because you can't send a ray trace directly out. And then you can give it some text. Maybe I'll uh, just grab this text here. We copied it on the other page. Let's just open it up and then I can just call it uh, ray trace render and then we'll delete the remaining text here and close that up. Maybe slide that up above here. So two different ways you can get your renders out. Let's go on to page three and what I want to do here is let's send out our kitchen and bath set and our wall elevation back into the floor plan. And I have a wall elevation saved here that we did for the kitchen. And then let's also change our layer set so we can see what that is referring to, to the kitchen and bath set. And if I open up that camera, let's send that out to the layout sheet. Open that up. And I'm going to send this out. Let's uh, file, send a layout. And you can send this out now as color. If you're using version 7 and prior, plot lines is the current black, black and white. It's going to give you a little bit crisper if you use color, a little bit crisper line weight. 
If you use Live View and Update On Demand, that will give you a nice color view as well. Let's go ahead and send it out to page three and let's change the scale of this to half inch. And then we'll just position this off to the side over here. This is quite a large sheet and grab the uh, text for the label on here. And let's just go ahead and open this up. We'll match what we had on the other page. A. And then we'll give it a name, which I missed that. Let's pull that up here. And we'll open that up. And we'll just say sink wall elevation. Slide that over towards the end back into the floor plan and we'll send out our floor plan to the view and really all I want is the kitchen so let's zoom in here a little bit and use the file send a layout and one option in here is to show the current screen which will help zoom it in a little bit let's also change the scale back to half inch we'll also send that to page three and then I'm just gonna crop in on this viewport because I don't care about the other rooms in that design so makes it easy just to kind of scale in on that area and let's we'll pull that over into here and then same thing for the floor plan let's grab that text we'll just open that up we'll just call this the uh, kitchen floor plan change the scale to half For the final page in the layout set, let's create a page four. I'm going to select the text that we have here, and I'm just going to draw a marquee around that and copy those, and I'm going to position those on page four. Then go back into the floor plan, and let's change this back to the floor plan layer set. During the design process, we did not create any exterior elevations. So let's go into the 3D tools and let's create automatic elevations for all sides. That will automatically place those cameras. Now if I double click on one of these and open it up, and this is showing the elevation of the house without the terrain. One of the things that let's do is let's place a story pull elevation marker on here. Before I do that, let's explore the defaults for that underneath the dimensions for the auto story pull dimensions. Let's take a look at what we want to locate. And here's a list of things that we can locate. So there's the grade level, highest ridge, rough ceiling, top of footings, and I'm just going to remove the top of slabs here since I don't really care about the garage. I'm going to put this on the left. And then on the general, um, I do have it on the left only having the outer dimension so that's um, not selecting an inner dimension and let's just check and make sure all of those settings look okay once we have that set then we can just click that tool and place those dimensions and if it places too many dimensions there's a lot going on here let's pull them off of this side these work just like the other dimensions in the floor plan view and the elevation views so we can just kind of pull these off and clean up the pole story dimension. Once I have this uh, set up, then what I'm going to do is now send this out to the layout sheet. And before I do that, let's actually change the camera style to the technical illustration and then turn our shadows on. Let's see if that looks any better with the shadows on here. And now I can send that out to the layout sheet and let's just make sure that I've turned on the shadows. We'll choose to send that out to layout and let's see if we can send this out at a half inch. And we'll change that live update to update on demand. This is going to be close to get that at a half inch scale. Let's see if we can pull this over and position it. We're going to be pretty close. And what I'm going to do is just rescale that to be at uh, 3 8 That should easily allow us to get in there. And then I'll just uh, close that viewport up off to the right. And that would allow me to get the back elevation on there. And let's just uh, pull this over here. 
and then we'll get rid of the floor plan text. I'll just uh, simply delete that since I won't need it. And let's go back and see if we can get our rear elevation sent to the uh, bottom of this page. Let's click on that rear elevation, open that camera up, and in this case let's change the rendering style here to be watercolor. And before we do that, let's make sure that we toggle our shadows so that we have those on. Now you notice that that is in the back side where I have the shadow on. And what I can do actually is I can change that to adjust the sunlight so that it can say sun follows the camera and will imply that it's a little bit lighter. This may not be accurate if you put a north pointer in there, but if you want to just get a crisp elevation, that's the way you can do it. Let me change the camera to a watercolor view and we'll see how that looks and then we can send that out to the layout sheet. Now the watercolor view takes a little bit longer to generate. There's also a setting in here if you look at your rendering technique options where you can actually include opaque glass. That's a nice setting to use so you don't see through the windows, especially with watercolor. It can clutter up the view. Let's send this out at 3 8 inch scale and we'll also send that to the same page and then we'll make sure that it is update on demand otherwise it's going to tax our CPU when we send that out to layout. Send that out and then we'll just position that where we want on the page and see if we can get this in on the uh, same page as our front layout. So if we have enough room we're very close. We'll just crop in on the two sides. And I might have to do a little bit of adjustment, but there's two different views you can send out. One with the uh, technical illustration. Let's see if we can grab that text off of the uh, front elevation so we can slide that up. And then we'll adjust the uh, text here and we'll just call this uh, elevations. And that's kind of the process you go through in creating the construction drawings. If you go back, one of the ways that I like to work on these plans is if you just double click on this, it's going to open up the plan right to that layout set. So if we close these views up, let's go back and close that uh, floor plan. And we go back to the main plan and I double click on that, it's going to open it up to that layer set. So I don't have to change layer sets. And that's a way that I prefer to work. Once you've got your electrical plan, you send it out to the layout, you can just double click on it and it will open it up to the layout sheet. So pretty quickly we were able to create the uh, different uh, layouts on page zero, again as your title page. And then you can start sending things out to layout. I create text on my profile plan so that I can easily move that around and modify it, not have to recreate it. You can send the images out, whether you drag it and save an image off on your disk and send it out. Here's a section detail that we added in there. And again, uh, color elevations. And then, um, of course, uh, other elevations that we sent with technical illustration and watercolor views. So that concludes the video. I hope you enjoyed the process for the Dutch Cottage design. Again, there are nine different segments in the video. So if you want to uh, watch them from beginning to end, you can uh, take a look at those on the chiefarchitect.com website. And have a great day.